contributors to Open Lineage open source uh, project. Uh, and actually, we that's the first time we met today. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. quite that's quite true. Uh, quite a long time we uh, been in contact, but we we just met today. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so all uh, everything to uh, I, I give it to uh, Pavel and Maciej to start presenting. Okay, uh, hello guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting us here. It's a great pleasure to be here and to see people not only in front of the computer but just to see you in real life. Uh, welcome to our today's talk, which is open lineage and airflow data lineage has never been easier. Uh, my name is Pavel Leszczyński, this is Maciej Buchowski, and we are both software engineers at Getting Data, and we are active Open Lineage contributors. So our talk is pretty short and highly technical. We will start with a brief introduction to Data Lineage and Open Lineage, then Maciej will dive deeply into the Airflow and Open Lineage integration. At the end, uh, we will uh, sum up shortly some other integrations with Open Lineage and present what's what's new the, the, the new features that we delivered so we can start with uh, with some definition of data lineage and why is that so important so organizations would love to build a healthy data ecosystem and one can think of what does it mean to have a healthy data ecosystem yeah so it's not only the matter of size of data uh, it's also not only the matter of assets being processed consumed and produced uh, a healthy data system needs also to scale in the terms of processes, teams, and people. And yeah, it's mostly the most important part of the job, yeah, part of the fun. Uh, so uh, we would love to be able to answer the questions like, what's the data source? What's the schema? Who's the owner? How often is the data source updated? Where does it come from? Who is using it? What has changed? And data lineage brings an answer to all those questions. And data lineage is a record for each data set of its consumers and producers. And uh, yeah, if you can think of how to collect data lineage, how to collect this metadata, there are at least two strategies, yeah? And they are really similar to, you know, extracting data from the photo, from the pictures yeah, you took from a camera, yeah? So one method is, you know, looking at the picture, trying to figure out what's there. We are trying to answer, let's assume we are trying to answer the question, what's in the photo, where was the photo taken, yeah? And as you can see on the left, it's probably sunset. It's like 26 minutes until sunset. You can guess it, I believe. You can say it's somewhere at the seaside, yeah? And you get some information where, where the photo was taken and what time. On the other hand, you can collect it on the camera side and you get the data with the millisecond precision and the GPS latitude and longitude, which is pretty much more accurate. And the same happens with uh, collecting metadata and data lineage. So, I mean, if you think of a Spark, getting data from the Spark job, uh, yeah, you can try to read Spark logs and do it somehow automatically, but it won't be fun anymore. You can try to you know, connect to Spark history server to collect what happened within the job. But if you do have your code running within an active Spark job, you can do it much better because you have an access to an active Spark session and so on and so on. So it brings a lot of advantages. Uh, the only disadvantage is that you, know, you need to put your code in each type of the camera to uh, collect this information. Yeah? And that's what Open Lineage is about. What, that's what our mission is, to define an open standard for the collection of Lineage metadata from the pipelines as they are running. Yeah? So we need to uh, create, like in terms of the cameras, we need to you know, create, create our agents and connect them into the producers like the Flink jobs, Spark jobs, DBT jobs, and Apache Airflow uh, so that we could extract the information directly there to build open lineage events. There is a great benefit of having open lineage as an open standard because you know, we need to bridge somehow the producers and the consumers, and we don't want to end up with n square of integrations, yeah, like 16 here. Uh, having an open standard means that producers need to talk open lineage language, and the consumer need to understand the open lineage language, but the producer don't need to communicate with the consumers as the open lineage uh, is the abstraction, abstraction layer in, be in between of them, yeah? Oh. Maciej. Okay. 
So, you know, uh, it would be nice to define a standard and have completely implemented and produce the open lineage data. But yeah, th this didn't happen. We have to start somewhere, right? So uh, what we've done is we looked at Airflow and decided that, hey, we have DAG object. We can uh, subclass it. And then we can get information when particular task instance uh, starts, succeeds, fails, yeah, and there are some uh, methods in DAC, like handle callback, that get co gets called each time uh, task instance states runs. But yeah, this this is for Airflow 110, uh, like two years ago, and, you know, sounds like a great idea at the beginning, but you have to modify all the DACs to import our, uh, you know, bit of code. Uh, you have to have our library locally when you're running because uh, if you don't have it, in, it just won't run, right? We, you import open lineage Airflow DAG, not, not Airflow DAG. Uh, and like, worst of all, uh, it stopped working in Airflow 2. So <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> this is the PR that we trace the problems to, and I'm not definitely not blaming anyone because we are relying on very, not only undocumented, but probably very discouraged behavior, but we had to find something better, right? So our first approach was to use something called lineage backend. Sounds very good for the job, right? Uh, it is a lineage, it is a backend, Probably uh, it's supported on Airflow 110 and 2.1 plus. For some reason, it didn't make it to Airflow 2.0. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, it has a very big drawback from our uh, point of view. So uh, it doesn't allow us to emit events and get information on task start and failure. It only uh, the lineage will only be reported when the task succeeds, right? And in operational lineage, sometimes task failing is way more way more important than task succeeding. So uh, you know, we need those, and we thought that hey, we need to contribute, right? It's uh, open uh, open source project. Uh, the contributors committers are awesome, and surely we'll get some help. Yeah, well, <laughs> our first attempt uh, was rejected. So we tried to add uh, simple methods, right? Hey, we have pre-execute uh, on which, uh, or like post-execute, on which success is, uh, task, uh, task, task instance success is reported. So hey, let's do the same on pre-execute. But, you know, in the extended discussion, in the issue, in the, pull request, it turns out that we are doing something more, uh, something bigger, something that would be better suited to a new interface. So uh, yeah, well, we, we need to add it, right? We need to implement something, uh, put it to uh, pull request and yeah, well, let's, we, we took a look at, you know, hey, we need to get as information when state is changed. And as you can see, I hope it's visible. There are like 100 plus, and that's only the beginning of the usages of task instance state. So we could do manually annotate every place that state is changed. But this would be a very uh, uh, Sisyphean job, right? Anytime uh, somebody changes this place, something, uh, it could be broken. So uh, we thought of a different solution. And SQL Alchemy, which is the library used in Airflow for its internal communication with database, has a mechanism to listen to database events. So we basically can say, hey, we want to take a look at uh, task instance uh, model on state uh, parameter and tell us when it changed. Right, and then we get notification. That's great, uh, but uh, how we get our code uh, knowing that something changed, right? So uh, we want 
people to add their own uh, plugins, their own listeners uh, to listen to those events. And Airflow plugin mechanism, which is, I think, very old Airflow mechanism, like uh, from one point something, uh, allows you to add, uh, I think, mostly UI, UI elements, uh, macros, stuff, stuff like that. But you know, we we added an element that is called listeners, and now you can add listeners that will uh, be notified of those events. And third of all, uh, Plagi, which is a library created by PyTest, allows us to register multiple listeners and or non-listeners and call those hooks uh, like transparently from the uh, place where something happens. So we don't need to know whether there is any listener, but using this library, we can just you know call something and uh, it will be notified. So yeah, this this got merged. Uh, we got uh, a lot of you know positive back there. As you can see, there was a lot of conversation, and you know I, I have to ask all the Airflow committers and PNC members, especially Ash Berlin Taylor, who were very helpful in getting this merged. And you know Airflow 23 is ready and uh, it's present there. So how exactly? But this is only how we get information. How the uh, task instance changes, right? We need to get information what exactly happens. And therefore, it's not a system like Spark that knows exactly what data is processing. In some cases, it knows, right? Uh, when you use BigQuery operator, uh, Snowflake operator, Postgres operator, uh, we can deduct the actual, what the job does by using concept called extractors. And we provide extractor uh, that do particular things when those operators are run, right? So for BigQuery, we can get job ID of BigQuery, call BigQuery API and ask, ask BigQuery API what happened in some particular job. Uh, for Postgres, we don't have this kind of API, but we can always you know, parse the SQL code and get the, um, from information schema of Postgres database, we can get information, what type of you know, column is this? And so on for, uh, for those type of operators, right? Also, uh, as we heard, you know, most people are using some kind of custom operators, Python operators. It's possible to create custom extractors for your own stuff. Uh, so people are creating them for uh, really different places. And you know, if, if this is something generic, then of course you can contribute it to Open Lineage. And uh, yeah, we have library that helps with it. We have a SQL parser. Uh, and you know, other integrations can use those features as well. So SQL parser is not tied to the um, Airflow integration. It's, it's written in Rust and uh, I hope we will develop it further. So, but you know, as we said, uh, the Python operator and stuff like this, bash operator is the most common example of, uh, of operators what people do with Airflow. So we can directly know what happens there because it's, you know, custom code. Uh, you can write anything. Uh, one idea would be to get the data from hooks, right? If you use Python operator, uh, it's, uh, it's there's a good chance that you're using like Airflow connections to do something with it uh, because this is something that you know Airflow gives you for free. So uh, could we do something like this with hooks? Uh, maybe, but hooks are very diverse. Uh, one SQL uh, hook is nothing like like Slack hook, right? Which allows you to post message to Slack. So we need to find a way that allows us to get the most from hooks that we want. And, you know, Airflow is looking at it. Uh, there is an Airflow improvement process, AEP48, that tries to solve a lot of those problems by making Airflow more data aware. And, you know, it's just a proposal for now. Uh, and it's quite a tangential to what we do. But if something like this interface was in Airflow, it would be much easier for us. And 
Pavel. Yeah, thank you. Let's have a chance to jump briefly to, to other integrations like Apache Spark, which is also uh, often triggered from Airflow. So OpenLinux already supports uh, Spark version 3.2.1, the latest one. Uh, we released at the beginning of the year the extensibility API. So, you know, within a Spark, you can read and write from anything, write to anything. And uh, even if we do not support such uh, visitors or data set builders, you can write it on your own. Just put a jar on the class path and the service loader will try to read your classes. So we can extend it uh, in a way you like. Polon level lineage is a pretty cool feature that uh, will be delivered soon. Uh, so yeah, it helps to answer the questions we used to produce the output column X. And the pull request to turn it on is is already reviewed, and so uh, yeah, the comments are fixed, so it's pretty close to getting delivered. Uh, the other cool things within the Spark, and perhaps smaller, are like the ability to spawn Spark from Airflow DAG. We'll keep track of it. The open lineage is under, understands um, even more about the data. It know it knows how to yeah, it understands the meaning of drop, delete, and alter commands. And for the data providers like Iceberg or Delta, we do understand the version of the data sets, which, which are versioned within those providers. We are also actively working for within the Spark, uh, sorry, the Flink integration, which is under construction. So we are already able to identify sources and things for Kafka topics, to fetch some data set schemas for Avro, to include checkpoint statistics in open knowledge events, and also to retrieve information on iceberg sources and things. Uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to publish the first experimental version uh, of that. And yeah, feel free to contribute to, 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 to the project and visit our GitHub page. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, I particularly like the last slide. I mean, uh, the, being the open source contributor is like uh, inviting others to contribute is always a good thing. Uh, are there any questions uh, to the to the presentation here from the audience?